Good evening, and welcome to the regular board meeting of the Fairfield Sassoon Unified School District's Governing Board, a meeting of the board in public and not a public meeting. This meeting is being held pursuant to Executive Order N-2520 issued by California Governor Gavin Newsom on March 12, 2020. David, are you speaking to, the, to all of our searches to side conversation? He's, he's in Any meeting. or all board members may attend oh, okay. the meeting by phone. Members of the public may attend the Fairfield, at the Fairfield Sassoon Central Office, 2490 Hillborn Road. Fairfield, California, to observe and provide public comment during the meeting. Members of the public wishing to address specific items on the board meeting agenda are requested to complete and submit a request to speak form prior to the calling of the first person speaking to the specific item then being discussed by the board pursuant to board bylaw 9323. Request to speak form should be turned into the secretary of the board, who is a superintendent, for items not on the board meeting agenda, outlined in item five under public comment. A person with a disability may contact the superintendent's office at 707-399-5009 at least 24 hours before the scheduled board meeting to request receipt of an agenda in alternative format or to request disability-related accommodations, including auxiliary aids, or services in order to participate in the public board meeting. May we have the roll call, please? Joan Gott. Joan, are you there? Judy Honeychurch. Judy, we're doing roll call. Announce yourself. Here. David Isom. Here. Jonathan Richardson. Here. John Silva. Here. Bethany Smith. Here. Craig Wilson. Here. We will be adjourning. Oh, is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. That motion does carry. We will be adjourning to closed session for discussion and possible action on matters of student discipline, personnel, negotiations, and litigation. Are there any members of the community wishing to speak to the site, these items? No public comment. Thank you. We are adjourned to closed session.
There's a song. phones you need to put your phone on mute unless you're going to speak okay okay because i'm about to call the meeting to order can everyone hear me on the phones oh, yes. Okay. Yes. all right good evening and welcome to the governing board meeting of the fairfield Sassoon unified school district's governing board please mute your phone if you're on speakerphone if you are attending this meeting by way of speakerphone, please mute your phone. Thank you. Let us stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This meeting is being held pursuant to Executive Order N-25-20, issued by California Governor Gavin Newsom on March 12, 2020. Any or all board members may attend the meeting by phone. Members of the public may attend at the Fairfield Sassoon Central Office, 2490 Hillborn Road, Fairfield, California, to observe and provide public comment during the meeting. Bethany Smith will serve as Clerk of the Board for this evening's meeting. We have John Silva, Joan Gott, Judy Honeychurch joining us by way of teleconference. They are in the district. They are in town. I'll forego my opening statement. Well, let me just say this. It's good to be sitting in this chair tonight. As you know, I ran for public office. I was not elected, and I will be continuing my service with the Fairfield Sassoon Unified School District Governing Board until at least 20 and 22. And I'm glad to be able to use my experience on the board to get us through this very difficult time to help navigate these waters that we've never been through before. Is there a report from our superintendent? Yes, thank you. Immediate past president, Mr. Issa. Um, the report in closed session first, I would like to say that our board, by unanimous vote, has officially appointed Tina Ahn as our Assistant Director of Elementary Education, effective July 1st, 2020. I'm going to read a little bit about Ms. Ahn. Mrs. Ahn rejoins the Fairfield Sassoon Unified School District team after spending the past six years as principal of Cooper Elementary in the Vacaville Unified School District. Prior to years as a principal, Ms. Ahn was the assistant principal at B. Gail Wilson for two years and taught elementary school for over 10 years. Mrs. Ahn is multilingual, lingual, speaking both Korean and Spanish, while demonstrating outstanding leadership abilities in her current role. Vacaville Unified School District Superintendent Jane Shamia, in her recommendation letter, commented, Tina has been principal of Cooper Elementary since 2014. Cooper Elementary is one of our largest elementary schools in the district with an enrollment of approximately 840 students. She has successfully managed all aspects of the school and consistently leads the staff with positivity, high energy, and a relentless focus on improving student outcomes. Under her leadership, the school has made tremendous growth in academic success, showing an increase in student achievement both in English language arts and math over the past three years. 
She has done this through her fidelity to professional learning communities, continuously analyzing student performance data with teachers, professional development, and developing a strong response to intervention program. Ms. Ahn earned her bachelor degree in sociology with a minor in Spanish from UC Berkeley, as well as earning her teaching credential and master's degree in education from UC Berkeley. She most recently earned her administrative credential uh, from Chapman U University. The Fairfield Sassoon Unified School District Management Team is honored to have Ms. Tina Ahn come back home to Fairfield Sassoon as the Assistant Director of Elementary Education. That's where everybody would clap if they were here. Yay! Also, by unanimous vote, the board has officially appointed Jeff Adrian as behavior analyst effective April 6th. Read you a little bit about Mr. Adrian. Mr. Adrian comes to Fairfield Sassoon Unified School District after serving as a training supervisor for Intercare Therapy Incorporated. Prior to that, he performed the role of clinical director for Gateway Learning as a clinical manager for Autism Spectrum Therapies. He earned his BC, um, his, his, in his letter of recommendation, um, was stated, during the times I have worked with Jeff, he was always in tune with the needs of his clients and families, strive to improve their lives in the best ways possible, and maintain a strong rapport with his clinical team. He's an empathetic listener and sensitive to the needs of those around him. He has strong oral and written communication skills. He's organized, reliable, and dedicated to completing any tasks he undertakes. He often went above and beyond for his team and his client. Mr. Adrian received his bachelor's degree of psychology from CSU Sacramento and went on to earn his master's degree from National University. He is a board-certified behavior analyst. The Fairfield Sassoon Unified School District Management team is honored to have Mr. Jeff Adrian join our team as um, in the position of behavior analyst. Yay. Also, by unanimous vote, the board has officially appointed Katie Yamamoto as behavior analyst. Ms. Katie Yamamoto comes to Fairfield Sassoon after serving over 13 years as a board certified behavior analyst for learning arts in Citrus Heights, California. In this role, she performed assessments, developed behavior plans, and trained staff on behavioral interventions. In her letter of recommendation, it stated, Katie has extensive expertise in the ABA field and is always striving to find individualized solutions to any challenging behavior she encounters. She's excelled in many areas of intervention, including leading social group sessions, team meetings, parent trainings, and collaborating with school staff. As a BCBA, she exhibited excellent levels of professionalism and was dependable, um, and, and was dependable support for the team she oversaw. She has displayed great leadership qualities and is an asset to any team. Ms. Yamamoto earned her bachelor's degree in psychology from William Jessup University and her master's in applied behavior analysis from National University. She is a national board certified behavior analyst and a crisis prevention institute certified instruction, instructor. We are honored and um, so excited to have Ms. Katie Yamamoto join the Fairfield Sassoon management team as behavior analyst. And there was no other action taken in closed session. Thank you. Um, our next item is item B. It's a board discussion on, oh, oh I'm sorry, okay. superintendent's report. Wow. What a difference a week makes. Um, a week ago this time we were in initial discussions surrounding what we would do um, to maybe postpone or cancel um, group meetings over 250 people. And now, as you can see tonight, we are in a very different place, having closed schools through August 17th. We are closed up through spring break and including, I'm sorry, April, and including spring break. Um, you can see we are practicing social distancing, and I'm just so uh, pleased that the, the board was willing and committed to conducting this meeting because even though our schools are closed, the organization continues to move forward. There are a lot of things that um, go beyond a teacher in a classroom when you're working with a 
school organization. And so um, we have a document that we have prepared for our governing board members, which um, outlines some of those activities, and we'll discuss that in the next agenda item. I just want to give a huge shout out to um, our management team and who have been literally since uh, over a week ago probably working 12 to 14 hours a day all through the weekend um, because our communication has changed by the minute. I mean, we'll, we'll give direction thinking, okay, this is great, and then two hours or even less later, things will uh, um, change. We're trying to communicate as best as possible. We are uh, individually handling emails and phone calls. Uh, Tim Gorey has been working tirelessly to respond on social media. Um, and so we're trying to get great news out because there are a lot of good things that are happening along with this crisis. I personally want to thank um, Martha Pierce, who has been here. Unfortunately, Linda Marsh is stuck at home, and she's been... Um, emailing and participating, but Martha has been here helping us coordinate a lot of the volunteer efforts that we are doing to assist in um, feeding kids and shutting off electronics. And so there's just been a lot, and it really, out of crisis, always comes opportunity, and it warms my heart to, to see how many people have stepped up and really uh, taken on leadership roles and volunteered during this time. Um, at this point, as I said, we're we're closed through April. Our governor got on and stated that he thinks few, if any, schools will return before summer break. Um, we had already started planning and discussing the what ifs, and uh, I know there are a lot of people anxious out there, particularly our high school seniors, who are wondering what this means in far as far as graduation requirements are concerned and their future college enrollment. Um, what we do know from the governor is that we are not going to do any of the, the assessments are waived. We, does, we do not know if that applies to AP exams or IB exams, and so we're waiting for further direction on that. What we anticipate doing should, should this happen is that we would bring to the board a temporary suspension of our current graduation requirements. Um, and reduce them to the minimal graduation requirements, which is 130 credits, and, there are, and it reduces the um, English language arts requirements. It reduces what we require for math for graduation. And so um, should that happen, we will bring that forward, and we will have a governance subcommittee meeting virtually to discuss this and other board policies, which will then come to the full board. Uh, for consideration and potential approval. Uh, but right now, what we know is last night, as you know, the Solano County uh, submitted a uh, order to shelter at home. And so essential functions are uh, consider are, you can still have essential functions, but everybody else should be staying home. Fortunately, in some ways, um, this is good news. Our schools are considered essential functions. Construction is considered an essential function. Feeding children is considered an essential function. And so we are able to require some of our employees to report. So with that, I am going to, um, I have one more thing. This is to all the board. We have a um, CSBA, uh, many of you attended uh, information at the California School Boards Association on our board self-evaluation process. And so the board self-evaluation is scheduled to open on Thursday the 26th and close April 9th. So you will receive a, um, you will receive something from you, Martha? Is that right? Okay, from CSBA. And um, you will need to access it. Linda and Martha will provide each board member with your username and password, or your username before March 26th, and you will be asked to complete the survey by April 9th. And that ends my report. Thank you, and we're amazed at the staff and administration for all of the work that has gone into uh, this chaotic situation, which was not planned, some of this you couldn't even plan for, and we're appreciative of quick thinking and the quick movement of the district, especially when it comes to taking care of the least of vulnerable, the most vulnerable, the least of these. 
Um, so we're at then item B, the board discussion on school closures. We've all been given a kind of a FAQ. Okay, you're getting now an FAQ, which kind of um, highlights where we are, who's responsible for what areas uh, concerning, again, this situation that we find ourselves in based on the COVID-19 virus that's affecting global community. So, so each on this document, what we did is we had the, I had our um, department leaders just outline some of the overarching, these are not all the activities, but some big activities that have happened um, and are, they're working on during these school closures. And so, uh, for example, in human resources, I just want to let you all know, the board know, that we're working very closely with our association leaders. We've had uh, at least two formal meetings and many, many, many phone calls and emails um, between our, our teachers union, our APA group, and our CSEA leadership. And we're trying to work as closely as possible for them, uh, with them to have clear communication so that we're all on, a, on the same play, page and try to alleviate fears. So um, I just want to let you know also that hiring has not shut down. Uh, Mr. Whittemore continues to direct and work with staff to hire and get people recruited, doing some creative things with virtual uh, interviews and uh, doing reference checks electronically. And so there's a lot that's still happening. And I want to give a shout out to the HR staff because he did have a number of his staff who had to report to assist with payroll because we still wanted to make sure that our, um, our employees are paid. Is one of those phones still on, not on mute? Somebody has, Somebody has not muted their phone. Joan, Judy, or um, John, if you have your phone, if you could mute it, or, unless you have a question. Um, then I want to just go on. Uh, also, risk management. There's been a lot of, of things that are coming into consideration as far as risk management is concerned. So you can see some of the things that are happening with um, coordinating uh, things such as making sure that we have the sanitizers available, that people are trained in order to uh, clean classrooms, things like that. There's been a lot with um, questions about workers' comp and leave and okay, things like that. So if um, you can read uh, other things that are happening uh, in the area of risk management. Educational services continues to meet frequently, almost every day, I believe, via uh, Google Hangout or in person. Our, um, and Dr. McCabe continues to get feedback and write the LCAP and look at single plans for student achievement and also uh, making sure that we are continuing with the hiring process. In elementary education, again, there uh, is a lot happening. Cindy Brown is helping coordinate our elementary principals as they uh, allow for teachers to come in and get Chromebooks, uh, continue with their single plans for student achievement, and also doing some virtual uh, work with them. Um, the secondary education, you can see some of the things that, again, they're working on. The single plans for student achievement, a lot of collaboration during the school's credit recovery is continuing, so um, that's great news. And there's just a lot that is happening on a, on a daily basis between our director and the secondary principals. In instructional support services, we are uh, developing the designated ELD lessons that will be able to be pushed out uh, virtually into Google Classroom, um, and you can see a lot of the support that they're providing. The Curriculum Instruction and Assessment Department, lots of things that are happening, really focusing on that digital curriculum and what we will be able to do as we um, move forward. Special education has been really kind of cloudy right now as to how we are going to serve our students with special needs and what the guidelines are and what timelines are. So we're still seeking and looking for additional direction, but there are some things that continue to move forward in that department. 
Uh, student services, we're su still supporting our long-term independence teach, uh, study teachers and families, uh, working on open enrollment, and also just continuing to uh, move along. There have been no uh, waiving of timelines if there's expulsion processes that are happening. So we're having to make sure we still continue to adhere to them. Business services, you can see a number of things that are happening um, in business services. I just wanted to say that business services encompasses all those uh, non-teacher, non-administrator, principal uh, departments. So when you are looking business services, that's our transportation, warehouse, custodial operations, food service, uh, our child nutrition, payroll, accounting, all of that is um, business services. And that all is still happening right now. So they are a very, very business uh, busy department. Um, child nutrition, I just want to give a huge, huge shout out to Dan Mitchell and his team. Um, they have just done an amazing job. We went from thinking that we weren't going to feed ch children to, oh, we have to at least get it up to our five schools. Um, we expanded by two. We're now serving at seven schools every day from 11 to 1. And um, today we uh, served over 4,000 meals to students. The meals consist of a hot lunch and then breakfast for the next day. A lot of coordination and planning that's gone into that, and child nutrition has done a fabulous job. This is one of the things that I know many of you have heard concerns about, is how are we going to feed kids? And I need to explain that there are still regulations that we have to follow. So, for example, we don't have any school out in the Cordelia Hills area that meets the requirement where we could serve food, like in the summer, like summer seamless, because that's what we're replicating right now. So in order to qualify to serve food, you have to have a student population of 50% free or reduced lunch or more. And none of those schools qualify or meet that requirement. So somebody said, well, couldn't you serve food there and then just serve to those who qualify for free and reduced lunch? Well, that gets a little problematic because there's also this law against lunch shaming. So what you would have to do is you would have to have a list of all those students who qualify for free and reduce lunch. And then what if a student came who wasn't on the list and then you had to, we would have to turn them away. And so right now, um, the other issue is it's really been difficult for us to staff even these seven sites. We're doing a lot with volunteers, but we do need child nutrition people there to open the kitchen to sh help share the guidelines that we have to have because every meal has certain things that we have to they have to have a milk they have to have a fruit i mean there's regulations that we have to continue to follow even during this time so we are um, looking at opportunities i've reached out to our county supervisor or county superintendent to see if maybe solano county office of ed could work with the local food bank they are out they're located out in the cordelia area and maybe they could have pick up time. Our schools, we're more than happy to have them utilized as a pickup point or, or for um, food uh, in the parking lot or whatever. Um, it's just that, remember, our custodial staff is not there to open and close schools, and um, we don't, and so they would have to man it and volunteer. But, but if somebody would like to use one of our facilities, we'd um, happily apply, um, comply. Counting, huge sh uh, shout out to our county department who is processing our March payroll. A number of concerns came through from our, our staff regarding pay and will we get our paycheck. And so payroll, um, it takes a few days to get everything taken care of. Plus we were doing some retros, if you remember. And so there was a lot going on and um, Right now, everything's set to go, and they should. Everybody should be paid at the end of this month. Um, fiscal services again, a lot that's happening in Linnea's work. She's continuing to work on our budget development, and um, we haven't had a lot of uh, of direction as to if some of those timelines are going to change. Right now, we're assuming that we need to just continue to meet all of our deadlines and timelines. Maintenance has been doing great job. Um, just 
just being on top of things, our custodial uh, group as well. And facilities and construction, as I said, that continues to move forward. In fact, we are expediting some of the moves. We were going to move um, at Fairview and Sheldon during spring break, but now that there are no teachers and no students there, we're actually able to get into the front admin building of Sheldon a whole month earlier. So again, out of crisis comes an opportunity, and so we're trying to make up some time um, at Sheldon and Fairview in our construction project. Uh, and then you can see with purchasing, there's a lot that's going on. There's still vendors that need to be pay, paid. We're still looking at our requisitions uh, rec and bids and RFPs. Um, warehouse has been helping out with deliveries. And TSS um, has uh, been really helping out making sure that everybody has access to work remotely if they can um, and troubleshooting. Uh, all sorts of things, you know, that, that usually people come into the central office to work on, but maybe now can uh, work from home. And then um, you can see from transportation, there's just been a lot of communication with uh, wondering how, you know, what the status is on our different routes and um, just making sure that there's, uh, there's work that's going to continue when we open our doors back up to students. So that's an overarching kind of where we are, and just if the board has any discussion or conversation on any of these or any questions, I'd be happy to. Yeah, I've been in touch with some community persons. They want to make sure that they are uh, able to volunteer as needed. So we, we talked about a possibility of bringing children to sites using some volunteers, um, church vans. I know that... Um, Bethel Church, Fairfield, Hope Christian Church, uh, Dennis Murphy's there, Pastor, and, and Anthony Gilmore, Bethel, and Sam Morris is uh, over at um, Church of Christ over in Pennsylvania, um, and he's willing to open up his site for those students who might not be able to charge their devices on order one-on-one, -on -one. but one of the things we don't always think about is those children who um, may not have electricity at all the time, um, and even those that are homeless. Um, so he's he's making sure that we know that his facility will be open. We just need to coordinate the days and the amount of students that are willing to go to go through there. And even my church is willing to serve as one of those places. Um, Food Bank, the Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, is setting up and gearing up for volunteers to come online um, and just to make sure that again that our, our children uh, are fed. Um, Craig, yet yeah. Craig. Yes, I'd like to understand uh, <clears throat> which, uh, I mean, as we got a tour through all the different departments, and you said business operations continues, which employ, which uh, categories of employees ha uh, are optional to come in or volunteer if they want, and which are, you know? Uh, uh, we had to determine the essential function, so we had to ask, we had to make sure that payroll, our payroll, our payroll tax, and uh, those people in business services, and then our HR staff. So they had to come in in order for us to complete payroll. And so they're, they've been very busy coming in quite early, actually, mm -hmm. some of them even before 6 a.m. to get this done, work done. Because not everybody, you know, that we have to still comply with those employees who maybe have compromised immune system. We cannot ask them to come in or those who are 65 and older. So some of these folks are doing not only their work, but maybe a colleague's work because their colleague is unable to come to work. Okay, each of the maintenance or business services, uh, are all of those, is it only teachers that are not required to come in or is it only a small number that are no, required to come in? No, or? right now uh, our employees are folks and our managers are, are, are not coming in. So no one except so, payroll so, and the, the ones that you... Uh, payroll, HR, our managers, um, our principals, have some of them have come on, but like all of our classified... Facilities managers, and construction? Uh, are, oh, the, no, they're there. Our, their, their management, our management... But operations, their management. custodians, they're not... Our custodians are not. Maintenance? Um, maintenance are not required to come in every day. Now, many of them are volunteering to do so. 
Because, and you know, just can, can you explain the difference of, I think the question, so we don't have to go through each individual yeah. job so, title, what is considered essential and okay. what is non-essential where we actually have so, volunteers coming right. in? Right, so the essential ones are the HR. So human resources, personnel, See, yeah, some, is, some, is an essential right. and they're coming to work. And mm -hmm. a number of our people in the business office are considered essential. Those that are processing right. payroll and having to keep right. the district functioning are essential and they're and coming to work. And then all of our managers, any classified or certificated management, we are considering as essential employees. Now, some of them have been working with their supervisor and they're able to deem that they can do their work at home. And if they're over 65 or have a compromised right. immune system, and, right. then even though they may be in one of those categories, <laughs> are they the are not required to go to work. And then in child nutrition, our child nutrition, our assistant director and our um, child nutrition managers are coming in. But the people who are working at the school site, they're are volunteering. volunteering. Our principal's manager or? They're, they're management. Okay, so they're on duty. Is it like 85, 90% of the of the employees are not? Would, can you estimate a breakdown? I would of... say probably 90% or more of our employees are staying at home. Okay. Can you clarify what you mean by volunteer? A volunteer? Do you mean the, they are volunteering? They're voluntarily their coming in. They're not volunteering their volunteer. time. They're voluntarily coming into work, I just to and sure. they don't have to. Right. Just thank, to make sure thank you. And that is, and it has been, it has been a little tricky because everybody's still being paid. And so someone said, well, how, how is that that you're saying, you know, you're volunteering, but we're paying you. But because we're saying you don't have to come in, we're saying, you know, right now it's a, it's a, um, you know, stay at home environment. They're volunteering to not stay at home, but to come and do their work here, electively. Right. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, Jonathan? Jonathan? I, I would like to commend the superintendent um, on her efforts. Um, I think that if we look at the past four to six years, um, there have been different trials um, that have come that Although I don't believe that there's anyone that truly is prepared for a moment like this, that there's an edge um, that you bring to the table that many people don't have because they've not had to deal with other circumstances. As a result of that, the team that you've selected to be around you have rallied to produce, and even furthermore, um, to even hear of staff members choosing to elect on their own will to come back on the front line of education, whether it's to prepare, whether it's to connect, whether it's to produce new education models for our students in this climate um, speaks to the word resilience that we speak of a lot in our models, in our statements. Um, so I just wanna take a moment, although there's still ambiguity in the air of what we will do from this point forward, um, that this should help to reassure our stakeholders, our students, that at the end of the day, their district stands behind them and stands before them in spite of this pandemic. So. Thank, Thank you. you. Are there anyone on the phone, uh, Judy, or Joan, or John, do you have any guests wanted to share something? But I want to make sure that, again, people know that you guys are on line or on the phone. If you, any of you want to chime in, is there anything that you want to share? Yes, please speak. Tell, tell her she needs to. Great, thank you. Joan said she wanted to just thank everyone for how quickly everything came down to keep our students and our staff safe. Okay, can you hit mute again, please, Joan? Joan says she wanted to just thank everyone for how quickly everything came down to keep our students. All right. 
Thank you. Um, Mr. Silva? No, thank you, Joan. Can you mute your phone? All right, great. Can you hear me though? Yeah. Yes. Uh, all right, thank you. Ms. Cortez? Uh, yeah, so I wanted to ask about, because I know and I saw too about the volunteers that are at the site serving lunch. Um, I don't know if there's a need for more volunteers, but if there is, how can people sign up or is there a way, is there a we, we had a lot of, thank you for bringing that up. I meant to mention this. We had a lot of inquiries about um, students helping uh, or you know helping limiting it to employees FSUSD employees who have been fingerprinted and so my my um, I guess my recommendation would be any of our students who would like to volunteer reach out to the local food banks or other agencies because they are real like Solano County Food Bank one of the things that they mentioned was a lot of their volunteers were over 65 and now they're not volunteering anymore so they have a huge need for people to volunteer so and then also some of those places that are opening their doors to the food bank Eric some of the places these nonprofits that are going to open their doors to the food bank outside of the food services they can volunteer at some of those places and I can connect you with those places I know are coming online to be able to be a secondary source for kids, so they don't necessarily have to be a school district out outreach outreach, but it could be one of the nonprofit outreaches where they can actually volunteer. And the food banks are actually one of the better places for young people. Um, they are. I have researched a lot of volunteering opportunities, and theirs are have the lowest age restrictions of really anything that I've seen. Um, for a nonprofit. Great. And this is, this again, a lot of this is, um, we've said this is, we're learning as we go, and sometimes that's the best way um, to learn. Because if you go in knowing everything, then you don't have to listen to anybody. So there's a lot of opportunity to understand and learn um, as we go right now. Um, I also had a question mm -hmm. about. Uh, the school closures, because I realize that that comes from higher levels. And I know, like, I've had students ask me, um, particularly seniors, so I'm not surprised, but about making their voices heard and trying to, um, the, I think the phrase that was used was making their voices heard about the school cancellation. And I discouraged them from coming to a board meeting because for that, the school cancellation itself, because I figured that wasn't a decision that the board makes. So where does that come from exactly? So that was a, that's a superintendent decision. And so it was not done lightly in any way, shape, or form. Um, we met with our Solano County public health official. And we had been taking guidance as a, as a county from our Solano County public health official. Um, he has a... Uh, I would say maybe somewhat more conservative take and was saying to us that schools didn't necessarily pose a threat to the acceleration of this virus. However, there was a lot of public outcry, a lot of angst, a lot of anxiety about um, this virus. It's been spreading very rapidly and it really depends on which health official you're going to talk to and what their take is on it. Um, and so initially when we, uh, I've been in contact with all of our superintendents from throughout the county. And we wanted to be a united front when we went out together. Um, and so our first, our first uh, letter out to the public was for two weeks. The more we got into this, particularly once the governor um, you know, started talking about just different things and his recommendations, shutting down of bars and, and restaurants and, um, health clubs and all of this, it, it was, it, we knew that it wasn't going to just be two weeks and we wanted to let our um, community know as quickly as possible what our decision was going to be. So that's why I came out um, very early, early Monday afternoon to extend it through spring break. And um, I believe all of our neighboring districts have also followed suit now. So all of them also are going through spring break. 
Yeah, Governor Newsom said even two days ago that he's um, not thinking that any school districts in the state will be open, back open, before summer. Now, um, so we're, we're still trying to be optimistic. Right. I know, but I'm just, I'm just sharing that some of, some, of, yeah. some of what we're sharing, and, 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 and while we're thinking optimistically, we also have to think Absolutely. medically and, and what, what, what the scientists and those professionals that deal with pandemics and these things are saying, um, and we also know that um, there's a possibility of the state of California being at 56% um, infected right. over the next eight weeks. These are just statistics put out by people who do this for a living, not who guess what's going to happen uh, for a living. And so we're, we're following you know, the, the guidance of our superintendent, who's working with all of the other superintendents in this county and people across the state to make sure that we're doing what's best um, for our kids, for our community, for, for our world. We're, we're really, you know, we're hoping for the best, but planning for the worst. And, you know, once we think a week, I mean, the information is being changing so rapidly that we think by a week to a week and a half, we'll even have more clarification. Um, and, and as I said, we're really trying to alleviate the angst, particularly for our high school seniors who are worried about, you know, their future. We've already heard that, um, you know, people, the A through G requirements, for example, that are required at some of our school or at some of our at our um, UCs, will they be waiving those next year for those freshmen who haven't met those requirements? You know, so we're we're gathering all sorts of information, and it it does change and evolve, and we're going to keep you posted as much as possible. And we'll have some serious advocacy on some of that because a student should not be penalized for a pandemic. Right. right, and um, yeah, I just was seeking clarification because I understand that, and as Mr. Richardson said, I know that's a lot of hard work and a lot of consideration, but yeah, that question just got me thinking about, I was just curious about where that came from um, or how that worked exactly, but you answered my question. So you thank a, you. Are you, a, are you a senior? Yes. <laughs> I, thought I thought I'd clarify the part of that question. <laughs> All right, so, so are we ready to move? Oh, Craig? So to clarify, uh, it was a local decision. And it's been extended through the end of spring break, and it may well get extended again. again. Mm -hmm. uh, and it might have been appropriate for students who wanted to comment on that local decision to come and speak tonight. Uh, is that accurate? They could have, and, and they can reach out to me. I mean, really, it was okay. the buck stops here. I was the one that called school <laughs> off and extended the school year. And it didn't go lightly, I'll tell you. It's been really difficult for, because, you know, as, as, as much as it warms my heart to hand out those meals to the kids who come by the school, which I've done, it was great, a great feeling, it breaks my heart that to see that school. they're not in school yeah. and not being educated. Yeah. And so we're going to do our best um, as we can to provide online supports and online learning. And there may be down the line, even if our schools are closed, where we have an opportunity to bring some students in, in small groups and different things like that. We're looking at all of those opportunities and we're gonna continue to try to provide as much as we can and the best quality that we can under these circumstances. I'll tell you, when the plan power outages happened this year, we thought, wow, will we ever see anything as bad as this? And we should never have said something like that. I think that was just a little baby preparation for what, um, what is happening. But we'll get through it, and um, we'll come out on the other end stronger for it. We're about to go to public comment. Okay. And I'd like to add that uh, in our communication, then our, our board member information emails, more than 99% of districts in the state covering Correct. more than 99% of all the students have made this same decision right Correct. now. So yeah. we're in the mainstream on this. Eric? It was kind of already mentioned, but yeah, I just wanted to yeah, piggyback on that. And yeah, I understand. I mean, I even told that particular student too, they could come to the meeting if they wanted, but even then they weren't allowed to. So I understand that the situation's really complicated. And yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to discourage students coming at all to the meetings to comment, but I know a lot of, Parents and students alike want to know directly where it's coming from, and yeah, um, yeah, that's all. It's me. I got the target. Yeah, but, um, but yeah, also, you know. but also, it's very important that we do pay attention. 
the more you stay in, the more you stay away, the more opportunity you have to halt the spread. And that mm -hmm. is extremely important. It public is, comment. yeah, for sure. And just and a couple of the states have already closed schools. I mean, For our governor has year. not done that. It, right. it could end up coming but from it could up. it could end up coming from our governor or you know our state superintendent of schools. All right. Thank you. Item five, public comment. This is the opportunity for the public to address items that are not on the board meeting agenda. Public comment is only permitted on matters within the subject jurisdiction of the board. Are there any members of the community wishing to speak? We have one brave member of the community who has come to speak, Mr. George. Gwynn. Mr. Gwynn. Hit the button there. And Mr. Gwynn, you don't have to pick it up. The, the button really, in the middle. If the, you just pick the, push the button and then set it down, green? they'll pick you up. Michaels, but um, I didn't expect it to happen now. It's, it's really too bad that it has, but um, I really hope that um, you guys don't decide to close the schools. It's going to be kind of expensive to have you guys all uh, give out meals. Some of you are making really uh, good salaries, and the students are not getting anything out of it. Um, that said, um, the governor, I think, has overstretched um, his authority in the, declaring a state of emergency. Um, We're going to ask if you would please speak with the governor about no, well, his declaration. Well, it's, it's, it goes on down to the bottom. It's not just the governor, but I'm just saying that um, that's being used uh, to uh, do things that shouldn't happen. For instance, people aren't uh, presumed guilty until there's a trial. And, in other words, it's, you're consumed, uh, considered guilty just because um, you're in certain categories now as far as this virus is concerned. And if you don't have the virus, then you shouldn't be restricted, is what I'm trying to say. And there's a lot of people that don't have it, and they assume that that's the case. And that's being used to create a lot of fear that shouldn't happen. So um, I sent you guys, um, some of you, the superintendent and uh, two or three of the um, members of the board, I'll, I'll send it to the rest of you if, if you talk to me or if the superintendent doesn't. It's probably a superintendent will do it for you. I just um, push for time. Um, so anyway, there's um, no, no way that um, the things should be going the way they are. And also, there's also a um, cure that um, it seems to be working. It's been tried in China. It's, it comes from uh, Japan. It's a, a drug called Avigan, A-V-I-G. We don't administer the test or the drugs, George. Can you keep it local, please? Okay, so what I'm saying is that this shouldn't develop into a big thing. It should be something that should be resolved rather quickly, and we can move on. Because if it develops into a big budget uh, hole for the the school district, guess who gets to pay for it? The public, and the public's paid enough. It's it's time to, to get uh, real about things. So I really hope that uh, this doesn't uh, turn into a uh, real fiasco. Thank you very much. Thank you, George. You I, I just want to mention that while we've been here, our governor has issued a statewide stay at home. Yeah. Since we've been here, it popped up. All right. So we are at any other speakers? And a part of the reason that I'm, again, wanting to get through the business of this meeting is so we can continue to follow the social distancing guidelines as, as put out by the CDC and the state. Item six, the consent calendar. Are there any items to be pulled from said calendar? Uh, I just want to abstain from voting from any of them because of the explosion cases, and I have limited information to that. Not a worry. Um, Joan, Judy, John, any uh, consent calendar concerns? All right, is there a motion to approve? Move approval. Second. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 John? John Silva, are you voting in the affirmative? 
Thank you. The ayes have it. That motion does carry. All right. We are then at item number 12, which is an action item. Annual review and potential approval. Will, will you please mute your phone after you've spoken? If you're online, will you please mute your phone? Thank you. Item 12A, the annual review and potential approval of resolution number 49-1920 requesting constitutional advance of anticipated tax revenues. There is no formal presentation. Are there any community members wishing to speak to this item? There's currently no additional public speakers on any items. On any items for the meeting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Item 12A, is there a motion to approve? Move approval. Second. Been moved and seconded. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, nay. The ayes have it. That motion does carry. Item 12B, the review and potential approval of award. Let me see. So item B, C, D, E, and F are all approval of bids. B is approval of bid number 20F, 129, so soon elementary Administration, administration, and restroom building to our rim construction. C is review and potential approval of bid number 20 F 130 Mary Bird new modular classroom building and site improvements to rim construction. D review and potential approval of award bid number 20 F 126 Talinas modernization phase two to rim construction. E review and potential approval of request for RFP 2083 21 switches to be determined. Item F is review and potential approval of RFP 2084, wireless access points and licenses to be determined. There are no formal presentations. I'm sorry, on item C. Oh, for the wireless access points, um, item F is to CDW Government LLC. We will take... Item B through F in one motion, if there's any discussion. I'm sorry, both E and F are to. Both E and F are to CDW, yes. LLC. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve items B through F? Move, Move. approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve items B through F. All in favor, aye. 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 The ayes have it, that motion does carry. We are then at item 13, the public hearing. It's the disclosure of the tentative agreement between California School Employees Association, Chapter 302, the Support Operations Unit, and FSUSD, effective January the 1st, 2020. There is no formal presentation. Is there a motion to approve? I'm sorry. The public hearing is now open. Public hearing is now closed. Item B, then, the review and potential approval of the tentative agreement between CSEA Chapter 302 Support Unit and the FSUSD effective January 1st. Is there a motion to approve? Move approval. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor, aye. 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 Mr. Silva? Mr. Silva? Mr. Silva, are you in agreement with item B? Barely, is that a yes? Yes, that's aye. Aye, thank you. The ayes have it, that motion does carry. Please mute your phone until we call for another vote. We are then at item 13C, the review and potential approval of the salary schedules of the California School Employees Association, CSEA number 302, Support Operations Unit, effective January the 1st, 2020. No presentation, no public speakers, any board discussion? Is there a motion? Move approval. 
Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor, aye. Aye. All opposed, the ayes have it, that motion does carry. Item D, we have a public hearing, which is the disclosure of the Fairfield Sassoon Unified Teachers Association initial proposal to the Fairfield Sassoon Unified School District contract negotiation reopeners 2020-2021. Mr. Ken Whitmore. Just ask that you open a public hearing and see if there's any comment on that. Thank you. Public hearing is now open. Public hearing is now closed, which takes us to item E, the review and potential approval of the Fairfield Sassoon Unified Teachers Association's initial proposal to the Fairfield Sassoon Unified School District contract negotiation reopeners 2021. No formal presentation, no formal speakers, no public speakers. Any discussion from the board? Move approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor, aye. 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 Joan? Mrs. Gott? Thank you. The ayes have it. That motion does carry. Item G. Re item F. Public hearing. Thank you. The disclosure of the Fairfield Sassoon Unified School District initial proposal to the Fairfield Sassoon Unified Teachers Association contract negotiation reopeners 2021. There's a public hearing. Public hearing is now open. Public hearing is now closed. Item then G, the review and potential approval of the Fairfield Sassoon Unified School District's initial proposal to the Fairfield Sassoon Unified Teachers Association contract negotiation reopeners 2021. No formal presentation, no members of the community to speak. Is there a motion from the board? Move approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve item G. All in favor, aye. 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 Thank you. John? Mr. Silva? Thank you. That motion does carry. We're at item 14. I got you. Thank you. <laughs> Review and potential approval of resolution number 52, 1920 to excuse board member David Isom's attendance at the March 5th, 2020 regular board meeting. He was sick that day. He will not vote on this item. Is there a motion to approve? Move approval. Is there a second. second? It's been moved and seconded. All in favor, aye. 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 The ayes have it. That motion does carry. Item 14B, the review and potential approval of resolution number 53-1920, resolution to excuse board member Jonathan Richardson's attendance at the March 5th regular governing board meeting. No formal presentation. Move approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor, aye. 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 Jonathan, you cannot vote. That's everyone. Mr. Silva, you're going to have to speak up. Item 15A, review of proposed new instruction materials for fall 2020. There is no formal presentation. There are no community members to speak. Are there any board discussion? Item then number 16, notice of upcoming. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. I meant to mention on the instructional materials. Um, they are displayed outside they and are. in libraries. However, we, we will have it posted as to where you can virtually uh, access, these informa uh, access this information. So we'll get that out. Thank you. The items are on display now in a foyer of the uh, headquarters of the Fairfield Unified School District. However, there will be other places, and we will be letting the community know in various ways of where those places are. Thank you, Superintendent. Item 16A, no presentation, notice of upcoming bids. Any conversation? Item 16B, written report 
Review of financial statement for the month ending February 2020. No formal presentation. Item 17A, the presentation of the initial joint proposal between the Fairfield Sassoon Unified School District and the Ancillary Professionals Association reopeners for the 2020-2021 contract negotiation period. There are no presentation, no community members wishing to speak. Then we're at item 21A, which is the adjournment of our meeting. And we're going to adjourn our meeting tonight in honor and memory of Laurel Okombi, the child nutrition assistant at Mark Garcia Career and College Academy, Edwin Jarvis, the CEO and president of Ed Equity, the gentleman for the past two years who has been uh, working with us uh, hand in hand on uh, producing equity within our school district, and David McMurdo, a retired teacher. We are adjourned.